Well, finally, first barbel fishing session of 2024, and this one's long overdue. We've had some terrible conditions so far this year with flood water. The seven behind me is rising again. There's been another named storm come through over the last couple of days. The level at Bridge North was 0.7 on the gauge a couple of days ago, and it's now 2.4, so it is increasing again, but we've got 10 degrees air temperature today. It's not too high. We are gonna be looking for a couple of slacks up the stretch behind me here. I'm at BAA Quatford. I've got three or four hours this afternoon. Hopefully we'll find ourselves one or two barbel. So here's the first swim behind me that we're going to have a look at. It's a single rod swim. Just got enough room between these two trees and it's probably going to have to be a, an underarm chuck because of the uh, overhanging branches, but nice little slack down there. Perfect area, hopefully, where there's one or two fish held up in these conditions. Well, anticipation is high. I'm ready to get the first cast of the session into the stretch in front of me there. It almost feels a little bit like first day of the season to be honest it's been that long since I did a session on the river with all the bad conditions that we've had this winter let's just show you what I'm going to use before we get the line in the water for today's session so I've got my Corum one and three quarter pound test curve barbel rod there make sure I don't knock the tip off it on the uh, the rod rest I've got that paired up with a, a bait runner with 12 pound barbel line spooled up on there and then at the business end camo bottom run kit from Corum I've got a 10 pound fluorocarbon hook length. It's going to be, I'd say, about three foot long. That's down to a size eight wide gape cuba meat. Given these conditions here today and the colour in the water, it's either going to be a really high attract boily wrapped in paste or meat. If I was fishing for chub, I'd be on cheese paste all day long. The stacks of colour in the river. So let's get the, the line out, get the session started on the meat. Going to feed some loose offerings all around the area. I have got bullion paste as a change up bait if needed, but this is how we're going to start. Let's get the session underway. Right, line untangled, so we are good to go. Yeah, it's a bit tighter than I thought in here actually, but we'll be able to make it work. Underarm cast. Got a crease line. Just coming across past this bush towards this one on the left there. So I'm just going to inch out towards the edge of that. Yeah, that's gone down nicely. Let's just pay out a little bit of line. Bait runner on. And we are in the water and fishing. So I cubed a couple of tins of meat up last night, just before I went to bed. We've got a bite there. Yeah, we are in. Come on. Not sure what this is yet, but I think it's possibly a barbel rather than a chub. Well, that was a real quick bite, that was. First cast. So this slack was definitely a good choice. Got snags to the right and also to the left, so just want to keep this fish on a really tight line. Let's 
trying to get under this snag on the right hand side. Uh, just keep the pressure on it. It is right under the rod tips here, so I suspect this is possibly a chub. Well, it is a small barbel. Happy days. Always bring the three meter landing net pole with me on flood water days like this, just to give you the extra reach. He's not quite ready yet. Hopefully you can see this on the camera. Well, I thought he was in then, but just got to be really careful with these overhanging trees. Yes, Barbel in the net. First one of 2024, come on. Well, that wasn't probably the greatest bit of footage there, so apologies about that, but that bite comes so quickly. I wasn't expecting that. Literally 30 seconds max that rod had been in the water. This dude's got plenty of life left in him. Come on, mate, let's have a little look at you. There we go. Long and lean. First barbel of 2024 from the seven, BAA Quatford, just tucked away in a slack, outside of the main flow, snaffled a cube of meat there, probably about five pounds, something like that, but who cares about the size? What a cracking barbel to start the year. Well, what a fantastic start that was. Just getting the rod ready, back to go out again now, but a bite so quickly. Couldn't have wished for any more than that last night. I didn't sleep ticky well last night because uh, not been out on the banks of the seven for so long. Just a bit of anticipation last night. Yeah, just really looking forward to uh, getting back out and to, to get a barbel so quickly in the session. It was a right old slip from the car park round the side of the, the stretch and the field to get myself up to this top end. I had a feeling that no one would probably been up here recently sort of fishing the top end of the stretch. So I thought, do you know what, I'll make the effort, get myself up there, take the chance that one or two slacks at the top end of the bend would be uh, worth a go. And uh, yeah, been rewarded nicely for that. So uh, absolutely chuffed. Let's get this line back in the water. I'll get the camera positioned properly this time. So hopefully if we get another bite, we can get a better look at the, uh, the fight and playing the fish in. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed there's one or two more to be had. Okay, right, so new cube of meat on, hook's still good, so we don't need to change hook length, just underarm cast towards the edge of the slack, just where the crease line is. Fingers crossed that last barbel's got a few mates down there. It's quite deep down there, you know, I reckon that's gone down probably a good, getting on for 10 foot possibly why there's one or two held up here. Let's just trickle a few more cubes in. Just trying to get them tight to this snag on the right hand side so they drift down nicely. Just four or five tubes, something like that. Come on, the next boys. So a bit of debris come down and wipe the rod out. Managed to grab it before it's got dragged in the snag on the left hand side, but let's get it back on the spot. That is definitely pretty deep there. This bank is really slippy underfoot here and uh, I definitely don't want to go 
into the water there because that must drop right off. To pay out a little bit of line. That's it. Rod back out on the spot. Come on, the next barble. Well, hopefully the view on the camera is not too bad because the sun is just peeking through the clouds in the distance there. So um, hopefully it's not too bright, but uh, it's just great to be back out on the banks and uh, getting a session in again. Just trying to find opportunities this winter with the level being sky high. There's been so many floods. As soon as one goes, another one comes. And then early in January, it looks like the level's just starting to settle down and all of a sudden the temperature crashes. And we've had 10 days, two weeks of freezing nights where chance of getting a barbell bite are going to be extremely slim but yeah even though the river's back up again now air temperature's 10 degrees and at about two and a half meters you know that's that's really fishable just got to find these slack waters get up and down your stretches just find where the fish are going to be tucked in there's no way they're going to be out in the main flow today they'd have to spend far too much energy out there and at this time of the year when the water temperature is so low there's just no chance they're going to be out there. So these slacks like these are the absolute key to finding bites in January, February in these conditions. We've been really lucky to have had one so far. Hopefully there's one or two more kicking around. Probably give it about another 45 minutes to an hour in this peg. Just keep tricking a bit of bait in. Just stay patient. Hopefully there's one or two fish in the area. If there's nothing else forthcoming, there is maybe one other peg a bit further down. Since I last walked this stretch just before Christmas and all the floods that have come down, there's loads of trees and debris in some of the swims that I've fished in the past that have got nice slacks in, but they're just full of all sorts of branches, logs, half felled trees, all sorts, the rivers, been pretty destructive over the last few weeks for sure so uh, it's amazing how quickly the, the landscape and pegs and places where you used to fish change three or four floods come through in quick succession the banks can look completely different in no time whatsoever and uh, this stretch has definitely changed a little bit since i was last up here a few weeks ago Wind's just starting to creep up a little bit, but conditions are generally pretty good. Let's just keep a bit of cubed meat going in. Oh, garlic on this. Give it 12 to 18 hours to soak in. Doesn't half make a difference. my BAA card just before New Year's Eve. 40 quid again for 2024. What an absolute steal. It's got to be the best value river fishing card anywhere in the UK. If you love your barbell fishing, if you want to fish a new few new stretches, then uh, if you haven't had a BAA card before, definitely recommend you get one. Drop on the website. It's www.baa.uk.com for 40 quid. You can just buy your ticket there and then online. It's an absolute bargain. Stretches like this where there's just miles and miles of river to go at. You can just walk and walk and walk, pick your swims. It's absolutely brilliant. Thoroughly recommended. If there's any BAA sections that you want me to fish this year, then just drop a note in the comments or you can find me on Facebook, Rob's Angling. If you want to get in touch with me, that's the best way to, to do so, by the way. A few people have found that already. I only created that page just before Christmas, a bit slow out the traps there. So uh, yeah, if you want to find me on Facebook, uh, Rob's Angling, just like and follow that and uh, you can drop me a message through there if there's anything that you want to ask. It's about 15 minutes or so now since that, uh, that first bite, Rod's been back in. Just gonna sit patiently on it, just keep trickling the meat back onto the spot. It's only a very, very tight swim out there. so. 
that first barb will no doubt has disturbed whatever fish are in the area but this is an ideal area where fish can tuck in the edge so anything that's moving up and down there's a slack probably about three four hundred yards up so if fish choose to move out of there just to work their way downstream then chances are they're going to duck into this area so we're going to persevere with it hopefully it'll do us one or two more yet Well, this rod's been out about 20 minutes or so now. Probably going to give it about 10 minutes more. I generally don't leave a cube of meat out in the swim for any more than half an hour before I refresh it. As I mentioned before, night before, lash a load of garlic powder all over the luncheon meat that I've cubed up, ready for the session, just to allow it to take on that powder overnight. I get that from a local equine store up the road. I don't know anything about horses and horse feed or anything like that, but they sell it. Barb will love it. Horses must love it as well. But uh, it does the job for me. So um, every 30 minutes or so, I'll refresh that cube of meat. So there's a, a real fresh scent trail out in the swim just to give myself the best chance of a barbel finding that hook bait. I like to hair rig the cubes of meat as well rather than just hook them direct onto the the hook itself, I'll use these meat stops. I'll show you these in a second. It's a little plastic sleeve that goes through the center of the cube of meat. And you've got a small pink little stopper that goes on the end just to hold it in place. Keeps your cube of meat really secure on your hair rig. So you know you're fishing at all times. It's the best way I find, nice and confident. There's a good fit on the Quorum channel actually just from uh, before Christmas, Darren Burr filmed it on the River Ouse. I think it's called Spice Up Your Meat. That's well worth a look. If you like fishing with lunch and meat, Darren's done some good stuff there with flavouring his meat with all sorts of different flavours. Garlic powder is my favourite, but there's all sorts of things you can use. So if you've not seen that vid, definitely check that out. It's well worth a watch. Right, let's get this rod in now, refresh it. And I'll show you how I use these meat stops. Well, it's an absolutely terrific afternoon. Sun is glorious now. It's really low in the sky, actually. You can do with a set of sunglasses, but gorgeous conditions. It is shining right bang on this slack here now. So the water's that cold up there. I don't think it's going to make any difference. Right, we need to get this rod back in the water quick. So let me just quickly show you what I, how I use these core and meat stops just to secure the cube of lunch of meat I'm using. So in the kit, you've got a plastic tube. I thread that straight through the centre of the lunch of meat. Get your bait and needle, pass that straight through the middle of the plastic tube, hair rig, thread that on, and then you've got a pink gripper in the kit as well that's got a little hook on the inside. So thread the hook through the loop of your hair rig, pull it down tight, so it looks like that. There's the cube of meat secured on the hair. There's no way that my fluorocarbon is going to tear through the meat and I know I'm going to be fishing at all times with that. Well, it's been about an hour now since that first barbell and there's nothing else doing in this peg, so it's time for a move. Itchy feet and uh, the next swim up the stretch is calling me, so I'm going to have a quick pack down, get all my gear together, get the rod in and make my way up to the next swim. So here's the next swim, we're going to have a dart in. We've got this structure here in the water, creating some slack on the inside. It's just the type of area that when the level's up like this, Bob will be tucked in behind this feature. I'm going to just drop the rig off the end of that snag there. Hopefully, there's one or two in the area.
another change of swim just a little bit further upstream again we've got a really nice slack on the inside here being created by this bush that's in the water there on the inside of this bend sun's out gorgeous afternoon hopefully we've got one or two of the sevens barb all tucked up on the inside here So I've had about 40 minutes in this uh, spot. I've been uh, chucking the bait in, tried a couple of different areas and there's nothing doing whatsoever so far. Session's gone a little bit quiet on me, but I'm going to give it probably five or 10 minutes more here, get the line wound in, just try and find one more peg upstream, just to have a dart in for probably about the last 40 to 45 minutes of the session, just to see if we can nick one more bite before we're going to pack up. Well, as you can see, another new swim behind me here. The last couple just haven't looked like they're going to do anything whatsoever, unfortunately. Half an hour, 40 minutes in those pegs, just no action on the tip whatsoever. So I've just come back up towards the car park. As you can see across the centre of the river here, it's absolutely belting through. But this near side margin, just down by my feet here, there is some flow down there. It's certainly not a slack area, but... I've just gone up a lead size to a four ounce lead and I can hold the bottom down there. So I've just scattered a load of meat up and down this near side margin here. I'm gonna fish this for about half an hour, see if there's anything tucked away under the edge down here. And just see if we can nick one last bite before we're gonna wrap up the session. Well, what a gorgeous winter's day it's been. Look at that blue sky behind me there, not a cloud in the sky. It's been difficult fishing, but at least we've avoided the blank with that five to six pound barbel first cast. Three or four of the pegs since then, but nothing doing, unfortunately. Hope you've enjoyed the video and taken one or two bits from it that might help your own fishing. There's about six to seven weeks left on the season now. So hopefully one or two more videos to come before the season wraps up for this year. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all on the next one again soon.